Um, on that note, Matt, do you guys use a certain amount of uh, analytics or web intelligence tools currently? Or, and if so, are you versed? Yeah, we use for the corp. I mean, in general, as a corporation, we use Omniture. Um, and then for many, many of our websites, we also tack on Google Analytics on top of it as well. Okay. Is there a reason you guys tack Google on? Is it to is it to compare and contrast the information or confirm or is it no, just No, it's primarily it's primarily for ease of of communicating data, especially to authors and agents. Um, you know, it's mostly in some ways it's mostly just the the ability to pull the data extremely quickly. Um, even though we know that Google Analytics is nowhere nearly as accurate as something like Omniture, um, it's mostly just as a backup for when something needs to get pulled or we need to, it's, you know, an author needs to be able to see something very easily or in a format they can understand it. Oh, definitely. No, I mean, yeah, a lot of organizations are doing it basically for the, what's the term, the non-expert view, so they can log in and kind of look at things without having to dive into uh, the Omniture world, which is a lot more advanced. So. How about you personally, man? Do you have, I don't know, is your role, do you get dirty yourself in the analytics tools, or are you more um, top-level? Uh, I do. Um, I, am, um, I, I oversee digital strategy for our department, so I work with our marketing and publicity teams on looking at new tools, and I also oversee new product development. Um, I basically focus a lot on analytics, um, less so sometimes on the website stuff and more on the social networking side um, or more on the sales side, but I definitely... You know, we we certainly are always looking for different ways of looking at data. Of course. Um, we definitely are a data-driven company, um, so always open to, to things that other tools cannot provide or providing it in a different way. What about, uh, do you have uh, much experience or interest in market research tools or anything uh, like P, Alexa, Quantcast? I don't know if you're familiar with any of them. Yes, depending, I mean, it depends on, what, on, depends on the functionality and the cost. Um, we have a corporate division that focuses on consumer analytics that looks at different focus group software. Um, we do that in our group as well occasionally. I work closely with the corporate group uh, on top of that. Um, but yes, we're always looking for ways of getting any kind of data on our consumers um, as much as possible. Great. Well, that's a pretty good uh, opening to our conversation we're going to have. It's, uh, our, our primary assets, I'm, uh, just to give you an outline here, usually a 15 minute, 10 to 15 minute capability overview, showing you a couple of our okay. tools live, explaining the key differentiators. Yeah, I mean, basically a good, you know, a, a good overall intro would help me determine whether I'm the right person for you to be talking to or whether there are other people that would probably make more sense for you to give a more, you know, in-depth look at. Okay. Great. Yeah, in that case, I'll keep it up for short. No, anything, you know, I mean, I'm definitely open until 1 o'clock, so, so whatever you think is best, um, that's great, and I may stop you along the way and ask you questions. Awesome. Yeah, please do. All right, and just to be clear, you guys are three hours ahead, right? So we got 20? Yeah, we're three hours ahead. We got, we got about a half hour or so. Awesome. All right. All right, in that case, uh, in that case uh, once again, my name is Patrick. Um, UPCO is a digital marketing intelligence company. We have two primary assets, which is combined for our 360 real-time web intelligence. Um, it's a advanced web analytics and visual recreation tool, as well as an exclusive search index that covers the entire internet. I'm going to spend a few minutes okay. on the first one, about one minute on the second, and uh, you'll see if it's relevant to continue talking or forward with someone else. So um, our key differentiator when it comes down to analytics, now um, Omniture, basically IBM's tools, Google's, all of the mainstream analytics. If I'm on your site, I move around for a few seconds, I write, my name is Bob, I delete it on the actual form. Then if I click books page, the only record of data that's being created is the actual page load to page load. So if I go from page to page, I, you know, I'm getting the path analysis of knowing where someone came from and where they went to, essentially. Right. Our main differentiator is we are storing um, every, the entire online session from a data perspective. So what that means is when you move your mouse for five seconds, we're storing the speed and the individual location. If I click 10 times on the left, not going anywhere, all of that is stored as a data point to be able to look up on a macro basis, if we're talking about 100 million hits, or if you want to look at individual ones. And with my deeper example here, if I say, hi, my name is Bob, then I delete, we would be able to search what's the percentage of people who click delete, how clear is my message, you know. That's the long story short, is we're going a lot deeper to capture the entire session and supplement that data. So are you recording every keystroke? Everything that... Um, 
from a legal perspective. By default, we don't do passwords, we don't do financial information, but yeah, correct. Keystrokes, okay. mouse movement, and also th little subtleties that's usually not noted when you say every movement is, you know, if you select data, uh, differentiate that from deleting in itself. And so, so deep in there, though. So. Okay. Okay, so through that, uh, through storing all of the action, we're able to recreate every session from your customer's eyes exactly as it was uh, executed. And all of this is directly synced to all of our data. So what this means is any time you see a piece of data, whether it's where someone's coming from keyword-wise, et cetera, you can click from every, uh, every module of our product and watch the actual recording. So I'm just going to let this run for a couple seconds. It's, uh, and this, of course, would be a view from your customer's perspective of your website visitors. It's uh, non-intrusive on the customer end. It requires no downloads, anything along those lines. And the page load speed is less than Google Analytics. So it's a very lightweight script that's basically capturing the entire session and um, recreating what's happening and storing every subtle difference you see. So yeah, even this case, on, uh, you, you have different changes and selections on a page more than just the type data. All of this is being stored, everything you see on the screen. So if you want to use it for segmentation, targeting, market research, you can grab pieces here and there. So other quick points to mention, you have control to pause, play, speed up, and um, also have the ability when we click on the bottom right here is to see it from the exact resolution of your customer. So if it's on a mobile phone, you're going to see it exactly as it showed from a mobile phone. On that note, I'm going to show you a deep, deeper mobile example because that's basically what everyone in the world cares about right now. So, um, This example here, it's 20 seconds, it's going to show the differentiation of, you know, if you're on a mobile phone, you're going to, in a lot of cases, you use two fingers. The first one is to kind of guide, the second one is to scroll up and down. In this example, orange is the first finger, blue is the second. Okay. I'll let it play from there. So the point being there, like the rest, we're capturing all of the subtle movements done on the client end, and we're also storing those as data to understand um, how long are people engaging with the site, how often are they looking at Zoom versus Flip, and of course you can see the data to justify or discover any extra trends. I have uh, one more screen to show on a capability basis and a couple minutes showing you the practical usage. So. Okay. Um, what this is, what, and this is a proprietary technology on our end, everything with the deeper mobile sessions. No, this hasn't been done in any other capacity, particularly the depth of the movement. This next te technology I show you is also a proprietary on our end. What this is, is the recreation of live traffic on any specific site segment. So let's say you had five people actively on a site. You would be able to see all of their actions live and you would be able to either actively engage with them, take a closer look at an individual visit, chat with them live, or just use it to take a look at specific segments and understand usability. What are we missing from the data? This can be applied on your site as a whole, regardless if that's 100,000 people. I don't know how you'd possibly use that personally or at the staff, so it's used more to say, hey, let's take a look at people from China who've made 50 purchases in the past, or let me, um, let me tag one of our top publishers, and every time he visits the site, I want to be able to see it to be able to service him. So it's more of a capability, particularly for an enterprise like you guys. The focus is the capability to recreate the traffic on the fly and view it as any segment. So. Um, from this view here, from our live view, okay. you can click View Details at any time. And what this does is it shows a view of the entire customer history of that visitor. Um, what this means is here's their page. I'm not going to let it play. We've, this is their session underneath, sure. panoramic view. And uh, once again, out of the analytics, a differentiator, we take pictures of every website on the Internet for the next tool, every page, so we can seamlessly integrate them for just a lot of more practical usability as opposed to having a thousand dashboards to figure out where someone came from, you know, where the capability is there but not the practicality. On the top here, the biggest asset of this page, aside from seeing their history, is being able to go back and see session by session basis you have a customer and you're trying to do analysis on their entire life cycle, you can go back and say, hey, what did this person do on February 1st? 
and all of this information, I'm going to keep it short for this, is all accompanied by data. You can define your KPIs and say, you know, past purchases, high value publisher. We have all kinds of slicing, dicing, segmentation, tagging technology, all integrated into the same data source that's capturing every movement and with the ability to replay. So. That's the long story short here. Other than this, um, we have the in-house capability to do any custom integration, such as if you want customers' names, um, visitors you already have data for. If they're anonymous, it's going to be pre-transactional to know that same person who's almost purchased whatever your primary call to action is 10, 20 times. The 21st time he comes, you can say, um, you can see that he's came 20 past times, and you can also customize actions such as, I want this pop-up to happen the 20th time only this visitor visits. So we can push and deliver content with a lot of flexibility using the deeper segmentation as well. And then do you, so besides from being able to look at individual sessions, is the data is the data rolled up in a different way than normal analytic sessions? You know, would would I mean normal analytic tools would use? Well, the main thing is we our default dashboards look similar to theirs. That's the request we get is to make it look you know page views, etc. The difference is if you want to dig and define, such as if you instead of wanting to define someone leaving one of your pages is what you want to look at, you could define that as when someone leaves and writes company name in the field. We're going to label that and create that as a metric using that deeper analysis. Did that, did that make sense, that example? Yes. So um, you do have the ability. Are there other, I guess, I guess my, my main question are, what are, the other, what are the, other, the other data points that you're able to look up in here that some of your competitors would not be able to look, you would not be able to look up in some of your competitors? Okay. Yeah, once again, the biggest, uh, the, the movement, you know. I think I, in general we would use this more for looking at rolled up data rather than try to go overboard analyzing individual mm -hmm. sessions in some capacity. But the idea of being able to look at certain kind of data points that we can't easily get and look at that rolled up data would definitely, I think, be appealing. Yeah, definitely. That's the big thing. Sometimes it scares, uh, especially enterprise, when they say, you know, we're storing a thousand times the data as traditional. The question is, how can I use it? How can I see KPIs from this? You know, how can I uh, be? Right. I, 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 we have one example listed here. I'm going to give you what we usually do, our step one, particularly with a company with a lot of um, basically over five million uniques a month, is um, you would highlight the highest value portion of your site that usually involves some kind of form or some kind of um submitting some sort of data, and we would internally customize the page and come up with unique KPIs that we think would be most relevant. This example here, I'll show you. I'm not allowed to show the actual client here, but we are allowed to um, show a fake site. We made similar. In this case, a sure. bank wanted to know their investable. They wanted to focus on upselling clients who would be choosing their investable assets on a page. They told us, use your technology to show us what we usually couldn't detect and something relevant. So we customized their page to, number one, measure the engagement time of the movement between each field so we could continuously reduce that time to, you know, obviously increase the conversion rate. And we came up with a confidence metric based on movement to say if someone made three choices before submitting, we're going to call them 33% confident. And we integrated a couple other, um, couple other analytics related to movement and hesitation. If a client waits for three seconds before clicking submit, in their case they have a security seal, we need to see, we can label that as security hesitation. So this example is over the course of a lot, very large numbers, what the averages are, and this is what they attempted to increase on their end. So the, 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 the fact of the matter is it's a customized asset in reality, the thousand extra. It's going to depend on each company, but there's always a lot of options. And they usually are around form entry and submission. Because right now you guys don't have a clue what people are typing in until they click go. So when it comes down to relevancy in all of these fields, that's usually what's going to be customized. Not thrown at you as a data dump, but at least used in an efficient way. How are you? How are you measuring the time spent on a field from the time they they click into the field, they click their mouse into the field? What's funny is we have both ways for that question. Um, there's two ways. Number one, while their mouse's actual physical position is over the field, that's our default. The other way is once they click in the field, and that way, if you move around on the site and it's still in the field, it's going to keep calculating. So okay. those are the two defaults, and all those kind of questions on our end, we have one data source for everything we're doing. We're not. 
integrating a thousand different products. We created all of this in-house. So we have customization and capability to a question like that to change the uh, global definitions fairly quickly. So. Um, last example, I, I know we have a couple minutes, so I'm just going to show you. Is the main, so is the, so, so, um, so the, uh, the main, the main websites that would benefit from this for sure are ones that are, that are more field heavy or ones that are looking for more direct interaction from consumers, is that right? Yeah, anyone with a high value call to action, I would say. A call to action that requires user engagement. Okay. It's hard to say, really. I mean, like you mentioned, I haven't looked in your site. Um, a, any site with a purchase, with a you know purchase or completion process, looking at right. I mean, we don't do a lot of we don't do a lot of e-commerce on our site now. We offer, but I mean, but if we were to if we were looking at other e-commerce options or 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 websites that focused on e-commerce in some capacity, that's where you're really probably getting better insight into where people are dropping out of the the. The, the purchase process? Yeah, I mean that that's kind of the no-brainer and um, aside from that I mean it even you, do you guys focus organic traffic? I don't know if that's from, I, I'm guessing search engine traffic or I don't know how much PPC you guys do but that's probably your biggest focus. It's mostly search engine. For this, uh, for this website in particular it's definitely yeah. very, it's very search engine, it's very search engine driven. Um, you guys do a lot of paper paper having, you know, 20,000 20, pages of of different products that people are searching for primarily. So, um, the um, it's a cool. I mean, it's definitely a cool tool. Um, can I ask? In I mean, in, and again, this may be very, very complex based on the bandwidth of the website along those lines. But how is your how is your pricing structure set up? Um, it's variable dependent on cost. I'll tell you to be blunt about it. Um, we're cheaper than Omniture, and we can do all of our integrations. You know, I know they're probably three times as fast on average, but it does take build time. So average for enterprise of your size, let's say tomorrow you want to probably have about a three to four week window on our end, and it's probably going to be about 30 hours internally. And those are not, you know, polished uh, statistics. So, yeah, I mean, it's an advanced enterprise product, but we have a smaller team with a lot more flexibility and I mean to be blunt we made our product a couple of years ago where we used our step one was what's already out there you know um, as opposed to making it 12 13 years ago so we're gonna have a lot of flexibility and we're also um, a lower price point but we're not you know five dollars a month so but it is variable is it just on based traffic. on setup or is it also based on you know the number of seats and the and the the traffic of the sites our hard cost is page views unique page views a month that's our main metric so basically okay. we're storing all this data we need to build a custom server for any site over a million page views a month that we customize everything to be as efficient as possible on both ends so that's our hard cost in each case um, the setup time is built up front and then after that, it's a variable fee depending on traffic. So that's the long story short. Okay. Um, okay. So I think that in general, it's a really interesting tool. What I want to do is I want to put you, I want to at least connect you with um, the person in our corporate team who really deals with our, our Omniture integration and website analytics. Because um, I think that, you know, Realistically, while we would use this in the divisions and we would look at different projects that we would be able to use it for, this is really meant for kind of, uh, like you said, like a, I mean, it's basically uh, it's basically a competitor to, to Omniture and to be able to offer things that Omniture can't. And you know, given the scope of that, I think it's, I think this is definitely going to end up being something that's decided more in, in the corporate division. Um, is there any is there any kind of either like simple documentation or screenshots I can send to I can send to them before I make the introduction absolutely I'll send you a couple short docs and also we're recording this call if I can attach that directly yeah you can send, yeah absolutely you can send that okay. um, the um, what I'll do is I will have a call with I will like I said I will talk to someone in the in the corporate team and I will um, and but anything that you any any kind of simple thing that I can yeah it's going to be a one one page capability yeah real simple no one wants to read more than five pages so. and then that's and then I will find out who uh, who I can put you in touch with okay great can I show you if we have a five more of uh, a competitive intelligence it's taking about two minutes for an overview to see if that's of interest are you all set Matt from no no you can show it okay. 
So long story short, um, sites Google, Bing, etc. Everyone assumes has all the data out there. In reality, it's up to websites to get indexed in Google. They're just kind of saying, hey, if a site's worthwhile, it's going to be linked to other sites. That's when we pick them up. So a lot of sites take a month, two months, three months. Some sites don't get picked up for a while. Um, it's, it's estimated Google has approximately 30 million websites in their index, basically everything searchable, out of 180 million total. We're the first company to have 180 million total within a custom search engine that we deliver to companies on the basis of competitive trending and analysis. On, uh, I will give you one quick example to make that more clear. So, so yeah, we've been building um, the first complete website index for about six years now. It's the, even the technology that we based our analytics product off was being able to do research in a lot more companies more efficiently. As a deliverable, the way we uh, use this for most enterprises would be monitoring of competition to understand their traffic increases and trends and the associated social media performance and content effects. So let's just say that your competitor's name was uh, BBCD. This is linked to our, uh, this is all in-house, our database of the internet. You click on, if Dance Matt's your guy's biggest competitor, you're able to select your competitors and compare them directly. So it's an aggregation of you know data that's on the competitive end, basically. And, huh. um, practical deliverable, just to you, practical deliverable in your guys' case would be monitor competitors every week. The traffic rank increase, you would say, hey, they had 50 million more Facebook likes. They went up 30%. It's probably worth taking a look at. Or on the industry as a whole, we would allow you to define your industry by keyword. We want to see other people using publishing from U.S. And you would be able to monitor the technological changes made by your competition and the average page load speed and any other source that's detectable, I suppose. So that's my 10-second uh, under per hour spiel. So that's that's all. awesome. It looks great. Is that part of that? That's, all, that's, not a separate, that's not a separate piece of... That's not a separate product. That's part of this product. It's all part of the same product. Yeah, we could anything. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you, you guys. Once you use the default, like anything, we do have any kind of customization imaginable. We usually sit down for two hours, discuss KPIs, see if our default covers it, and if it doesn't, we can take any information you want from your competitors. So that's great. So that's why our top level, you know, 360 web intelligence combining both of these assets and no other competitor we have has really thought of these concepts. But we, you know, spent about six hours developers, I'm sorry, six years developing these technologies. And uh, while we're new, our biggest hurdle is just lack of experience. And, you know, we've been out for approximately a year compared to the amateurs. So even in your case, I'll tell you 70% of the time we're taking on pilots to specific segments of traffic before we're kind of showing you very clearly the added value to switch over your system. So that would be a practical next step because I do know the time and build taken for these large scale systems and it's not worth someone getting fired over before using a product for a bit, you know, so. Sure. That's great. That's really great. Uh, so send me the data. Um, let me follow up and I'll get you a contact of someone you can reach out to in the corporate team. Okay. Matt, uh, thanks a lot. If you have any other questions, uh, please reach out to me directly and uh, have a good day. Sounds good. I'll talk to you guys soon.